Okay, anybody else behind me? No? Okay, I have the thought for the day. No, lower your expectations. <laughs> so I asked a homie once, I said, hey, why don't you come on a trip with me? Uh, would you like to do that? He goes, yeah. I said, have you ever flown before? He goes, no. I said, how do you feel about flying? And he said, anxiety attack. I said, but I'll be going with you. And he says, anxiety relieved. <laughs> and it made me kind of think about what is it that relieves us of our fear and our anxiety? Where do we find relief from that? How do we learn to rest in our fear and to accept it and allow it to transform our lives, which it certainly can. Because we can get stuck in what they call the trance of fear. And then it paralyzes us. So we want to get beyond that kind of paralysis. But we want to break the cycle rather than defend our life from the things that, are, that terrify us. Uh, we want to somehow live more fully. So uh, years ago, I took two homies with me to speak up in uh, in Upper State, New York, and while we were there, we went to Niagara Falls, which is like, you know, the seventh wonder of the world or something, and just very powerful and amazing, just I've never seen anything like it. So then I bought tickets to this thing called Maids of the Mist, or Maid of the Mist, and, and you get on a boat and you get very close to the falls, you know? And uh, so we're snaking through this line, and uh, one of the homies, I don't think he really fully understands where we're going, and he goes, we're not getting near the falls, are we? I go, uh, yeah, that's sort of the whole idea, and they're handing us raincoats while, as he's having this conversation, and these big slickers, and we're getting really close to the boat. Oh, I can't do that, I'm terrified of water. And apparently he had this phobia that was born of, as a kid, being somebody trying to drown him a couple times, and so he's absolutely terrified, I go, Nimol, there's nothing we can do. We're going to have to go through with this because here we are. And so myself and the other homie, we went to the front of the boat with him and had him in the middle and we locked arms. And, you know, I'm, I don't have a phobia of water, but I was terrified because you get really damn close to the falls and you go, okay, boat, that's fine, don't go any farther. And we're getting closer and you're getting all wet and you go, oh my God, this, the damn falls are going to topple this entire boat. And, and he was petrified, but we locked our arms with him, you know, and, and afterwards he was oddly exhilarated. And sometimes, you know, when we belong to each other and remind ourselves of the safe haven of belonging to which we are connected, the stranglehold of fear loosens its grip on us. For our fear and our anxiety and the thing that terrifies us is always asking us a question. Is it okay for me to be here with you? And the answer is, yeah, it's okay. I accept you. Because the minute you do that, suddenly there is no paralysis. There is no trance of fear. There is no being stuck in it. It's like a balloon that loses its air. Suddenly you're freed. And that only happens when we provide for each other a safe haven of belonging, where we kind of lock our arms with each other. And that's what we're invited to do every day. You know, a lot of you know uh, that I hand out thousands of my cards in juvenile halls and uh, probation camps, detention facilities, prisons, and, and I always say, call me as soon as you get out. Don't delay, you know, because if you delay, Watch, you're going to get caught up, and then I'm going to bump into you in another entirely different facility. So don't come see me immediately. And so once in our old office, there was a homie named Louie, 16 years old, and, and he sits in my office and he's, ta-da, you know, here I am. And, and, you know, I just got out yesterday, and you were the very first person I came to see. And never in my life had I seen more hickeys on a human being than on this guy Louie. His neck, his cheeks, it, it was Chupetona Solandia. And I said, Louis, I have a feeling I was your second stop. <laughs> and all I remember was we just fell out of our chairs. We laughed so hard, and, and it was more than just hilarious. It was, we had wandered into this safe haven of belonging. When we had sort of locked our arms together, suddenly kinship, but it was like, eh, you know, the Niagara Falls isn't going to topple us because somehow we're together. 
and we've locked our arms with each other. So I invite you today to so somehow widen your circle. Maybe there's somebody who hasn't felt included in your circle and your haven, your safe haven of belonging. And if you can do that, then we're no longer paralyzed. And we can look at our fears together and just say, yeah, it's okay if you're here. I accept you. Thank you.